You know, even the hardiest Canadians can be brought to their knees with a snowstorm and a power outage. So last winter, faced with this very problem, I was very concerned about an elderly relative who lived alone. So immediately I rushed out and said, I wonder if she needs medical care or other attention. And I was really worried because she's had two days without any power and all alone. So do you know what she wanted? Well, she wanted a coffee, and Tim Hortons is part of Canada's culture. She wanted donuts, and she wanted to make sure I got the ones with sprinkles on them. And she wanted a connection. I come from a healthcare organization. We're sometimes defined as a social enterprise. Uh, yes, a nonprofit charity. But, you know, what's really important is what we do. And we spread hope and happiness. And it is an awesome responsibility and a privilege. Why? Because we are impacting people's lives. We are impacting how people feel. What I learned, you know, during the winter storm is that, you know, when your starting point is actually about hope and happiness versus many times our traditional starting point of medical care, you're going to go to a different place. You're actually going to go to a better place. So that's where we started. We spread hope and happiness to our staff, to our talent, to our clients and their families, to communities. And while actually we have started a worldwide movement, and we've done it in three ways. First, we realized, in fact, our staff were already doing this. So our role was to amplify, boost, and celebrate all that was happening. Our staff, nurses, therapists, supportive care workers, physicians, every day they are in people's homes doing amazing things. And our research unearthed a mountain of these examples about what we do every day in people's homes and in their lives. And in fact, I'll share with you some of the stories. Let me tell you the story about Marg Allen. What Marg does on her night tour when she's taking care of a client in the home, she hand crochets a rose. And rose, the rose is symbolic for our organization. And what she does is she leaves it in the morning for the client and the family to discover. Let me tell you about Tara LaFrance. Tara puts together home chemotherapy relief kits. And they're to help people with comfort. And they're jam-packed full of all kinds of interesting goodies from chapstick, to hand lotion, and it just shows the thoughtfulness that they put into not only their care, but into making people have some hope and happiness. We also heard about balloons that people send to people home, people's homes to celebrate their birthday. Um, how, in fact, they are shoveling the snow. How they're sending flowers. All of these we were actually overwhelmed with the thoughtfulness and the kindness and the connection that all of our staff were bringing. So what did we do? We said, let's bring together all of our staff, all 8,173 of our amazing talent. And we brought them together not to talk about health care or safety or quality, although that is extremely important. We brought them together to celebrate hope, and happiness. And so, what we did was we filled all the cinemas in Canada, because we do have all mobile workers throughout the country, and our staff were able to see, and we showed them a simulcast presentation of, in fact, all that would be possible if, in fact, we could harness 
the energy that they have. The energy very similar to the Niagara Falls. And what we didn't say to them was, you know, it's important you do this, and this is what the new standard is, and follow these instructions. What we said was, keep doing exactly what you're doing. It's awesome. You are spreading hope and happiness. And at the end of the presentation, I was able to hear sort of this unmistakable sound of emails. It would be like all of your emails going off at the same time. Bing, 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 bing. Because we had orchestrated to have everyone receive an email, and in the email it said this. Are you ready to spread hope and happiness? And if you are, push the button. And when they did, they all received $25 in their account. So our next step was, in fact, to pay it forward. Because with the $25 we gave them, there were no strings attached. And we just said, thank you for doing what you're doing. Keep doing it. And could you encourage others to pay it forward? And oh, yes, they did. So we were on Twitter, and we were trending. Uh, we had the hashtag hope and happiness. And the snowball that we had created was truly amazing because it helped us understand just how important hope and happiness is in people's lives. And that sometimes when we look at things from a medical orientation, this human connection is sometimes missing or it's lost. And that, you know, fundamentally shifting the orientation to really a starting point that is about hope and happiness versus many times where we start with despair or start with a preoccupation about the disease, this is the game changer. This is the social innovation that's so important. So the third thing we've done is to actually pay it forward globally. And we've done this both in our organization to keep it alive, but also events like today are to help us make sure it is spread globally. And I'm going to rely on you and hope that I can encourage you to actually spread hope and happiness. What we have done for a whole week this year, we had 100 of our staff who aren't involved in direct patient care. So our staff with human resources and finance, they went out on home visits and had such an amazing time. We're going to make it a tradition. So I want to conclude with a great story. And I think you'll be interested in it because it's a story about Canada and the Netherlands. And during World War II, when in fact the um, Canada hosted uh, members of the royal family to protect them for safety. And while they were here, Princess Juliana gave birth to Princess Marguerite. And in the hospital ward uh, where she was delivered, they actually declared that to be da uh, Danish territory and also uh, to prepare for the um, uh, succession lines. And in gratitude, uh, Princess Juliana gave Ottawa, which is the capital city of Canada, 100,000 tulip bulbs. And this, this tradition continued. So today, in fact, as we celebrate Tulip Festival every year in Ottawa, we celebrate one million blooms. And it signifies that the long winter is, open, uh, is over. Uh, thank goodness the long winter is over. Um, but for me, what it really is about is a living, beautiful testimony of the power of spreading hope and happiness. I hope I have encouraged all of you in your own special way to start your movement, Spreading Hope and Happiness. Thank you very much. <laughs>